Hi there. In this video, I will talk about how you can identify and drop null values. So null values are part of every real time or the real world data set and you need to know what needs to be done with this uh, null values. One of the ways is uh, dropping the null values and that's what we will be covering in this video. So first thing is how to identify and basically pinpoint where are the null values and then processing it from the perspective of dropping it. So first of all, let's import our library, which is Panda. Import Pandas as PD. And then let's get the data set, which we are working, the some superstore sales data set, and we'll see whether there are any null values or not. So let's go ahead and execute this. It will take, okay, it's done. I thought it'd take a couple of seconds. All right, after that, uh, first thing is uh, that when you are using orders or when once you have created the orders uh, object for the sheet which contains orders information, you can use the method is null by saying dot is and I just press the tab after writing is and you can see it is giving you is copy is in and is null. So the method we are interested in is null. So I'll press the tab again or the enter again once i execute this command what it does is it shows us the entire data frame with the true and false value so true indicates whether that particular cell or the intersection of row and column which is actually a cell is having a true value if it is true then the value is null in that cell if it is false that means value is not null but what I'll do is I will just use hat because uh, there are some 8,300 odd rows in this data set. So it will take a couple of seconds, but enlarge on the screen. So I'll just use hat. And now you can see on the first few observations, those uh, the output of the is null function. And as you can see, pretty much everything is false. And uh, that is true because uh, there is nothing null in these rows or columns and uh, then it becomes really interesting to see then if you are not able to identify or there are no nulls on the first few rows or the last few rows because we can use had as well as tail then where are the null values so the interesting thing is uh, using the function sum what sum tells us is basically by the it takes a column on the column names in the one column and the sum of or the count of I would really say into the uh, next column. So how it does it is by counting true values because true is indicated by one in the back end or at the back of the system. So if we are executing this then you will see that where are we having the null value. So if I go down so we have the null values only in the product based margin. Now let's identify those rows where for product based margin which are null. So for that what you need to do is you need to filter or just get the product based margin within the orders object. So again you need to write orders and write the product based margin. What I'll do I'll just copy this and paste it over here. All right, once we are done and then write is null. Press enter. Shows me an error, let me quickly check. Let me go down to see in detail. All right, key error, it's not an index. Okay, think uh, what we have done is, quickly I'll just show you, is uh, I'll just, Put it over here so basically what we are saying is only shows only filter those rows where order is null earlier we were applying it on our data frame instead of the column name let's try to execute this yeah now we got it and if i go towards right here are all the null values only those rows which are having the null values so if i see over here there are 63 rows which are null and as you can see 
the product base margin earlier it was 63 rows using the sum function what we got similar to is null you have not null as well which is the opposite of is null so for example if i say orders dot not null dot head and execute that it will show true for all those rows which are not null and false which is null so it depends on what kind of operation you want to get or what kind of output you want to get and accordingly you can apply that operation whether is null is null will give these values as false and not null will get these values as true and then you can count it with the help of the sum function and get the desired output now let's see how you can drop the null values so before dropping let's see what is the shape to identify number of rows and columns so we have 8399 rows and 21 columns and let's try to drop the so orders dot drop and a and you need to specify argument if i show you the argument I'm going a little bit down the main argument is this how is equals to any and then x is 0 indicates the rows if you in change the 0 to 1 then it is it will be changed to columns and then there is a threshold subset and in place by default in place is false so that whatever we will do it over here will not impact our original data frame so if you want that it should impact then make it true all right first of all let's experiment with this how is equals to any and then see the shape so those 63 rows have been removed and now the count is 8366 comma 21 apart from any the another parameter that you get is all as you can see it over here how is equals to any or all if all values are na that means all values in the row are na then remove the remove that row so copy paste and i'll just press all and if you don't know how i brought that parameter section i have just pressed shift and two times tab 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 and here i'll get the information all right and if i execute this you get 839921 which is similar to our original that means none of the rows have the uh, null values in, in the entire row so that's why you have got the output 8399 that means nothing have been dropped after this you can explore it's another parameter which is subset it's sometimes very helpful so what is happening over here is that it is looking at all the columns and checking whether in that particular row all the values in for the respective columns are null or not if you want you can specify a subset so what you can do is orders dot drop na and use subset and subset is equals to you need to specify the column name within the brackets and then say how is equals to all and then shape well sometimes it's little difficult to go up and down and see the column name so what i usually do is i just command it up and use the method all right columns CO. and it gives me the column name now i can choose whatever column i want so maybe i want let's say customer name and province these are the two columns and it's in the required format so i don't have to do a lot of typing over here and i just paste it over there and now I just comment this up and uncomment this and execute. And now you can see that uh, in subset, when I have taken just the subset, that means not the entire row, but only for these two columns, if it has the null values in that particular row, then those rows will be dropped. And since it does not have those value, null values, you are getting the entire data set. After that, uh, you have another parameter for drop na which is threshold so if i show you 
threshold is equals to none and let's see the definition what is given over here if i go down require that many non na values that means in in a normal english sentence if i tell you so threshold is equals to 3 will basically indicate that if any row has more than three values as a null values then remove those rows but if there are any two values which are null or three values in a particular row which are null then don't drop those rows because there may be a scenario that there are a lot of nulls and you just want to specify a threshold that beyond a certain threshold just drop all those rows because then it does not make any sense so for that you can specify how is equals to any and threshold is equals to one one will indicate that if a particular row is having one value as a null value in a particular cell then don't drop that but if it is two or three uh, in that two or three values which are null then drop those values all right so if i just go and look at shape and again we get this because there is just one null value which is in a product product based margin and uh, since it is coming under this threshold that's why it has not dropped it so i hope you have uh, found all of these parameters useful and i'll meet you in the new video the new topic